Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network, an online member-based community where health IT professionals can share ideas, discuss their experiences, and collaborate with one another on all things related to health IT. On this week's video, I want to provide a brief overview of the Hospital Readmission Reductions Program, or HRRP, which is a program by the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services, which penalizes hospitals for excess readmissions based on certain procedures and conditions within a 30-day period when they're compared to the expected readmission levels. Before I get started, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, please go ahead and do that now. And as always, throughout the video, if you like the content that you're seeing, don't forget to hit that like button. According to CMS, the Hospital Readmissions Reduction Program is a Medicare value-based purchasing program that encourages hospitals to improve communications and care coordination to better engage patients and caregivers in discharge plans and in turn reduce avoidable readmissions. Hospital readmissions associated with the same condition or procedure have an impact on patient outcomes and they also introduce significant financial cost to healthcare organizations. Prior to the HRRP being introduced, it was estimated that up to 20% of all Medicare discharges had a readmission within a 30-day period. A group called MedPAC, or the Medicare Payment Advisory Committee, took a closer look at these high readmission rates and estimated that up to 12% could actually be avoided if the right policies and processes were put in place by organizations. Of course, with the very high cost of inpatient and acute care, this represented an opportunity for the government to save significant funds and reducing hospital readmissions became one of their strategic priorities. The statutory requirements for the HRRP are set out in 1886Q of the Social Security Act, which required the Secretary of the HHS to reduce payments to subsection D hospitals for readmissions beginning October 1st of 2012. In the years that followed, the 21st Century Cures Act also saw an adjustment to the HRRP program with a slight change in approach for measuring that was introduced in fiscal year 2019. So with the change in 21st century cures, instead of basing the expected readmission results against all hospitals that are in the US, they broke that down into five groups and individual performance would be relative to other hospitals with a similar portion of patients who are dually eligible for Medicare and Medicaid. The hospital readmissions reduction program initially targeted three conditions, but has since expanded to six. Those six conditions are acute myocardial infarction, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pneumonia, heart failure, coronary artery bypass graft surgery or cabbage surgery, and elective primary total hip arthroscopy or total knee arthroscopy. So as I mentioned, the readmissions over a rolling period are assessed against an expected level of readmissions for that particular group, and then CMS calculates the payment penalty up to a maximum of 3% based on where the particular hospital falls in that assessment. Once the determination is made, CMS sends a hospital-specific report to the particular facility, and the hospital has 30 days to review that report and submit questions about the calculations of their penalty payment or to request adjustments to those calculations. Once that 30-day period and any subsequent correction discussions have completed, CMS reports the HRRP data under the Inpatient Prospective Payment System and Long-Term Care Prospective Payment System Final Rule Supplemental Data File on CMS.gov. HRRP has been in place for just over a decade, and we are seeing significant reductions in the hospital readmissions that are occurring for those six areas. But one of the other things that's actually been noticed is there are reductions in conditions and procedures that are not those six. And that is really believed to be attributed to the fact that some of the workflows and some of the policy and processes that are in place don't target specifically just patients with those conditions. So if you look at hospitals that have reevaluated and made changes to their overall discharge process, they've likely done that for all patients that are being discharged from the facility, not just those that are being discharged for specific conditions and procedures in the HRRP. That would include things like discharge planning activities, having uh, pharmacy techs go over patient home meds before they're sent home so that they better understand what the medications are for, follow-up calls that occur after discharge to make sure patients are picking up their medications and that they do understand what their 
post-discharge instructions are with respect to medications, activities of daily living, and follow-up appointments that they may have scheduled, and many other things that have been put in place throughout the course of that admission to try to reduce the potential for readmission within that 30-day period. Throughout the course of the program, we have just over 2,900 hospitals that have been penalized at least once, and that represents 93% of the eligible hospitals under this program, which is a pretty high amount, but hopefully with some of those penalties they've received, they have put a little more focus into sort of putting workflows and putting processes in place to try to reduce their admissions going forward. And we are seeing positive results from this penalty-based program. So it is anticipated that going forward, CMS will continue to look to penalty-based programs to try to encourage change in activities within healthcare organizations. So that's just a quick look at the HRRP program that is in place and has been in place, as I said, for about a decade. I hope that it was helpful and gave you a little bit more information about what that's all about. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I will see you again soon.